And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dice Tower. Today I'm taking a look at a game called Tower of London, which is based on the Tower of London. This is a small game from WizKids, kind of an area control, uh, card playing, and it kind of references the Tower of London. Ah, let's get back to my studio and look at the game. So in Tower of London, you're going to have a map of the Tower of London. It's split into four quadrants here, which, by the way, is... I, I, I know they did that board-wise, but visually, that's a difficult thing. We were constantly... I had people asking where each quadrant was. Surprisingly, that they did not make this so that it matched the board, right? I, I, I'm, that's just an odd design choice. But anyway, buildings are part of one of four quadrants. They're also one of three colors. This is going to matter because... You're going to have a scoring card in play based on a number of players. And at the end of each of the rounds, one of the orange is going to score all three rounds. Green will score the second two, and blue will score. And whoever has the most beef eaters, that's these cubes here, in a house or in a building, controls that building. And whoever controls the most buildings is going to get the highest number of points. The second most buildings gets the next one. Points are gotten by ravens. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most ravens wins. Or if someone gets seven ravens, they win immediately. So therefore, the order of scoring matters. But you'll see that blue, the outermost buildings only score in the final round. Each player is going to have a deck of cards. These cards are the same for each player. These cards each have three buildings on them, one from each color. And then they have a special ability on them. So players are going to be taking these and shuffling these. There's also a pile of event cards that comes with the game. You're going to take three of these event cards and put them here, one for each round. At the beginning of a round, you'll reveal the event. So at the end of this round, before scoring, if you control Byward Tower 36 on the board, which is right here, you earn a raven. Okay, so that's a special thing that players can do. If they control that, they'll get a raven. Each player will shuffle their deck, and then they will draw six cards. You're going to be using six cards per, for each round. You're going to be looking at your card, and each round is going to have three parts. You're going to pick two cards from your hand and put them in front of you in order. Starting in player turn order, each player is going to turn over their first card, and they're going to put a beef eater in one of those buildings. So here I can put a one in six, 19, or 32. So let's say I choose six. I put a, uh, a beef eater there. And then here it says, move all opponents' beef eaters from the building you just placed to any adjacent buildings. So maybe there was two greens here, I could move them to adjacent buildings with walkways. If I'd played them in any other order, I might have put a guy in building number four, and then add one extra beef eater to a building that's plus or minus one from where you placed. So I put it in four, so I might add another beef eater to number five, which is plus or minus one. And then after players are done with this, then you're going to determine turn order for the next round. Everyone's going to move their cube to the orange building number on their first card played, so as players put these out here, if two players put it on the same number, you go by the second number played. And if that also is the same number, then, um, then you switch turn order. And then that's the turn order you go by the next turn. You'll put those cards aside. You'll take a look at your other four cards that you had from your deck. You will pick two of them, and then you'll play the last two. After that's finished, you'll do the scoring and give Ravens out. Then players are going to pick other six cards. They're going to pick three and get them out of the game. The other three get shuffled back into their deck. You shuffle your entire deck and draw six more cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. At the end of the second round, you do the same thing, and you'll be left with seven cards. You shuffle them, and you'll get six of them. So you will see all your cards except one, and you might have seen that one in a previous round. That's pretty much the game. As I said, these events will change things. Like here, the moats are flooded. Any existing beef eaters in these buildings must go to an adjacent building. Criminals have escaped. Randomly remove a beef eater from each building next to six. Add one beef eater per player to any empty building. So these events are all kinds of different crazy things can happen here. Sometimes they're about a very specific thing. 
Um, the, this one here has no effect per round, so these events are going to change things also. At the end of the game, most Ravens win. Unless one player gets seven Ravens over the course of the game, then that player wins. Okay, so as we look at the Tower of London, first of all, the production is interesting. I like the Ravens. You might not have noticed, but they have little red dots as the eyes. That's good. The cards are big. The event cards aren't. But the cards at each player, the tarot size, it's nice. Um, the map is cool other than that weird quadrant angled type thing. However... I just was at the Tower of London, as you saw. This game is, there's almost no theming to it. The event cards try, right? And the the actual, the, the cards themselves, they try. So like when I look at the card here, it's backstab, incriminate, tunnel, poison, destiny. But really, this could have been anything. And that's unfortunate, because I think the Tower of London is a really cool theme. And while they tried to shoehorn in the, the theme a bit and the events may be a bit more like, oh, there's you know flooding or whatever in this building, therefore it doesn't work. It just doesn't come across at all. Having cubes be bee feeders just isn't really that interesting, doesn't really come. Um, it's just a themeless game. So it's an area control game. And it's kind of a wonky area control game. Now the card system is intriguing, right? I don't mind this, you get six cards. You got to figure out which one to play first to put a thing and then this one next and different events happen. And that's a cool system. The initiative part of it is not cool at all. That is a super convoluted way to determine who goes first next turn. And not once when I was playing, maybe, well, maybe not once, hardly ever was I like, oh, I would play this one, but that's going to make my initiative different next round because it didn't really matter. Because if you tie with someone else, then you go to the second card, which might be lower. It was just really, and in a five-player game, it's really wonky. That, that, that should have been just cut from the game. Speaking of which, there's also a couple, well, not maybe a couple, but there's one rule where there, one of the cards says destroy a building, and it doesn't mention in the rule book at all what that means, and we guess that that meant you put, we put a raven piece into that building and no one could go in it for the rest of the game, which is correct. I just wish that had been in the rule book. The rules aren't complicated, but like I said, I like this, this card system, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to pick one to put a thing in and take the action to the second one. I love that system, but in practice, the system is just very, very random. I put this out having no idea where you're going to be putting your people, having no idea what cards you're going to do, and even though we have the same cards, there's no way to guess what cards any person has or where they're going to put someone or what they're going to do where they make your people leave that building and go to this building, and it's... It just feels like this big random area control game. I like the idea of playing a card and doing the special action in the second. That's interesting. So here I put it in 20 and then move the beef eater to this place into an adjacent building. So I'm actually going to 21. That's not as cool as put a beef eater and then this one says add another beef eater to the same building. That's cooler. And then you have these six cards and you take three of them out and then you shuffle them back in and you draw six and then you take three of those out. All this sounds good in theory. This is one of those games that when I read the rules, I was like, oh, this sounds pretty good. But in practice, especially with five and four players, it is just so chaotic and so random that when it's over, you look at the winner and you say, good job, what did you do? And they're like, I, I, I don't know. I just happen to have the most blue buildings at one point in time. And because everyone else was fighting over these buildings or because the cards just worked out that way. Add a healthy dose of randomness from the event cards, and it gets even worse. It's just, I want to like this game. I like the concept of the game. But when it comes down to it, it just felt like I was putting stuff here, and you were putting stuff here, and he was putting stuff here, and moving them around, and doing this. And in the end, I just can't recommend it, because it never felt like we were actually doing anything of, of value. Well, I was putting cards out, and this sounds like a cool combo, and then watching my combo get wrecked by something somebody else did, or my combo pulling off, and then just watching other people just get rid of my beef eaters and move them to buildings because, it, not necessarily because it helped them, but because that's what the cards told them to do. So it's unfortunate. Tower of London, fantastic place. Highly recommend you visit it. Just don't play the game based on it. Dice Tower of Judgment, just too random. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. 
Shut the oldest door. Boop. Boop.